This lecture is about uh, uh, how to mine text data with social network as context. In this lecture, we're going to continue discussing contextual text mining. In particular, we're going to look at the, the social network of authors of text as context. So first, some motivation for uh, using network context for analysis of text. The context of a text article can form a network. For example, the authors of research articles might form a collaboration network. Or authors of social media content might also form social networks. For example, in Twitter, people might follow each other. Or in Facebook, some people might claim as um, friends of others, etc. So such a context uh, connects the content uh, of um, the authors. Similarly, locations associated with text can also be connected uh, to form geographic network. But in general, you can imagine the metadata of the text data can form some kind of network if they have some relations. Now, there is some benefit uh, in jointly analyzing text and its social network context or network context in general. And that's because we can use network to impose some constraints on topics in text. Uh, so for example, it's reasonable to assume that authors uh, connected in the collaboration network tend to write about the similar topics. So such a uh, heuristic can be used to guide us in analyzing topics. Text also can uh, help uh, characterize the content associated with each subnetwork. And this is uh, to say that uh, both um, kinds of data, the network and text, can help each other. So, for example, uh, the difference in opinions expressed in two subnetworks, let's say two social networks, uh, can be revealed by doing this kind of joint analysis. So here, uh, we're going to uh, briefly introduce uh, a model called a network supervised topic model. And uh, this, in this slide, we're going to give some general ideas. And then in the next slide, we're going to give some more details. But in general, uh, in this part of the course, uh, we don't have enough time to cover these frontier topics in detail. But we provide references that would allow you to uh, uh, to read more about the topic, to know the details. But uh, it should still be useful to know the general ideas and to know what they can do, to know uh, when you might be able to use them. So uh, the general idea of network supervised topic model uh, modeling is the following. Uh, let's start with uh, viewing the, uh, the regular topic models like PLSA or LDA, LDA as uh, solving an optimization problem. Of course, in this case, the optimization objective function is the likelihood function. So we often use maximum likelihood estimator to obtain the parameters. And these parameters would uh, give us uh, useful information that we want to obtain from text data, for example, topics. So we want to maximize the probability of text data given the parameters uh, generally denoted by lambda here. Now, the main idea of uh, incorporating network is to say that, to, to think about the, uh, the constraints that can be imposed based on the network. In general, the idea is to use the network to impose some constraints on the model parameters, lambda here. Uh, for example, the text that uh, adjacent the nodes of the network can be assumed to cover similar topics. Indeed, in many cases, they tend to to cover similar topics. We, so we may be able to smooth the uh, topic distributions on the graph, on the network, so that the adjacent nodes will have very similar topic distributions. So you, they, they will uh, share uh, a common distribution of the topics or have just a slight variations of the topic uh, uh, distributions or topic coverage. So technically, 
what we can do is simply to add a network induced regularizers to the likelihood object function as shown here. So instead of just optimizing the probability of text data given parameters lambda, we're going to optimize another function f. This function combines the likelihood with a regularizer function called r here. And the regularizer is defined on the parameters lambda and the network. It tells us uh, basically what kind of parameters are preferred from network constraint perspective. So you can easily see this is in effect implement the idea of imposing some prior on the model parameters. Only that we're not necessarily having a probabilistic model. But the idea is the same. We're going to combine uh, the two in one single objective function. So the advantage of this idea is that it's quite general. Here, the topic model can be any generative model for text. Right? It doesn't have to be PLSA or LDA or the current topic models. And similarly, the network can be also any network, any graph that connects these text objects. This regularizer can also be any regularizer. We, we can be flexible in capturing different heuristics that we uh, want to capture. And finally, the function f can also vary. So there, there can be many different ways to combine them. So this general idea is actually quite, quite powerful. It offers a general approach to combining uh, these different types of data in a single uh, optimization framework. And this general idea clearly can be applied to many problems. Uh, but here in this paper referenced here, a particular instantiation uh, called a net PLSA uh, was studied. In this case, it's just an extension of PLSA to incorporate some simple constraint imposed by a network. And the prior here is the neighbors on the network must have a similar topic distribution. They must cover similar topics in similar ways. And that's basically what it says in English. So technically, we just have a modified objective function here. That's defined on both the text connection C and the network graph G here. And if you look at this formula, and you can actually recognize some part fairly familiarly, uh, because they, are, uh, they should be fairly familiar to you by now. Right, so can you recognize which part uh, is the likelihood for the text data given by a topic model? Well, if you look at it, you will see this part is precisely the PLSA log likelihood that we uh, want to maximize when we estimate the parameters for PLSA alone. But the second equation shows some additional uh, constraints on the parameters. And in particular, we'll see here it's uh, to measure the difference between the topic coverage at node U and node V, the two adjacent uh, nodes on the network. We want their distributions to be similar. So they, here we are computing the square of their differences. And we want to minimize this difference. And note that there's a negative sign in front of this sum, this whole sum uh, here. So this uh, makes it possible to find the parameters that are, um, that are uh, both to maximize the PISA or the likelihood. That means the parameters will fit the data well, and also to respect the, this constraint from the network. And this is a negative sign that I just mentioned. Right? Because there's a negative sign, when we maximize this objective function, we are actually minimize this uh, second term here. So if we look further in this uh, picture, we'll see there is also a weight of H between U and V here. And that's based on our network. If we have a weight that says, well, these two nodes are uh, strong collaborators uh, of researchers. Well, these two are strong um, uh, connections between two people in a social network and then they will have a high weight then that means it will be more important that to uh, make sure that their topic coverages are similar and that's basically what it says here and then finally you see a parameter lambda here this is a new parameter uh, to control the inference of network constraint 
we can see easily if lambda is set to zero, we just go back to the standard PLSA. But when lambda is set to a larger value, then we will let the network inference the estimated models uh, more. So as you can see, the effect here is that we're going to do basically the PLSA, but we're going to also uh, try to make the topic coverages on the two nodes that are strongly connected to be uh, similar. And we ensure their coverages are more similar. So here are some, some sample results from that paper. And this slide shows the regular results of using PLSA. And the data here is uh, DBLP data, bibliographic data about the research articles. And the experiments have to do with using four communities of publications. Uh, IR, information retrieval, that means DM stands for data mining, ML for machine learning, and web. There are four communities of articles and we were uh, hoping to see that uh, the topic mining uh, can help us uncover these four communities. But from these sample topics that you are seeing here that are generated by PLSA, and PLSA is unable to generate uh, four communities that uh, correspond to our intuition. And the reason was because uh, they are all mixed together and there are many words that are shared by these communities. So it's not that easy to uh, use four topics to separate them. If we use more topics, perhaps we'll have more coherent topics. But what's interesting is that if we use the net PLSA, where the uh, network, the collaboration network in this case of others, is used to impose constraints. And this, in this case, we also use four topics, but net PLSA would give um, much more meaningful topics. So here we see that these topics correspond well to the four communities. Uh, the first is information retrieval, the second is data mining, the third is machine learning, and the fourth is web. So uh, that separation was uh, mostly because of the influence of network, where we leverage the collaboration network information. Essentially, the people that uh, form a collaboration network would then be kind of assumed to write about the similar topics. And that's why we can have more coherent topics. And if you just listen to text data alone based on the co-occurrences, you won't get uh, such coherent topics, even though a topic model like a PLSA or LDA also uh, should be able to pick up uh, co-occurring words. So in general, the topics that they generate represent words that co-occur with each other. But still, they cannot generate such coherent uh, results as net PLSA, showing that the network context is very useful here. Now, uh, a similar model could have been also used to characterize the content associated with each subnetwork of collaborations. So a more general view of text mining in the context of network is to treat text as um, living in a rich information network environment. And that means we can connect all the related data together as a, a big network. And text data can be associated with a lot of um, structures in the network. For example, text data can be associated with uh, the nodes of the network. And that's basically what we just uh, discussed in the net PLSA work. But text data can be associated with ages as well, or paths, or even subnetworks. And such a way to represent text data in the big environment of all the context information is very powerful because it allows us to analyze all the data, all the information um, together. And so in general, uh, analysis of text data should be uh, using the entire network uh, of information that's related to the text data. So here's one suggested reading, and this is the paper about the net PLSA, where you can find more details about the model and how to estimate such a model.